Right, so hey guys, and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So as you may know, in the last tutorial, I showed you guys how to use dictionaries for beginners and how they can pretty much um, be used to carry out a basic task. So I didn't go much in depth about how they can actually be used to implement as a solution where it can prevent a lot of logic. So in this tutorial, we're going to be using dictionaries to create a rock, paper, scissors game, but we're not going to have any GUI. It's just going to be a console based game. So without further ado, let's begin. So today I'm going to try and improve the quality of my videos by st starting to use Visual Studio Code, which was um, a recommendation by someone that has either subscribed to me or is on Discord on my channel. So here it is. Let's start by opening Visual Studio Code, which I started using recently and it's really a lot better than the default idle that I use. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file and then save that as, save that on my desktop and call it rps.py. RPS stands for rock, paper, scissors, if you didn't know. So first off, what we're gonna need for this um, is to actually be able for the computer to make a guess between rock, paper, and scissors. For this, we're gonna be using numbers instead. So in Python, we have something called a random module, which helps, which helps us produce um, random numbers. <clears throat> so this is what we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna be importing random, because we need um, random guesses about either rock, paper or scissor from the computer. So we're going to be using random numbers and converting them into a user a, into the computer's choice of whether the, uh, the computer selects rock, paper or scissor. So once we're done with import random, let's hop on to creating the actual main loop of our game. So main loop. And in here, I'm going to start by saying while one, which means while true. Um, it's going to start a continuous loop, so never ending loop. Now we need to create a new variable which will store our random number. So random number equals random dot rand int. Um, and then we need to give it a number range. So I want a random number between 1 and 3. So once I'm done with that, I have a variable now that's called random number that's assigned to a random um, integer between 1 and 3. So each time I run this program, the program should return a number randomly between 1 and 3. I'm going to quickly go ahead and zoom into the screen a bit so that it's easier for you guys to see. Cool. Sorry about that, I just realized it was quite small. Now the next line, I'm going to actually print out this random number just to show you how it works. So now if I go ahead and open CMD and then go on to CD desktop Python rps.py. If you see right here, there's a there's a whole lot of numbers being spammed, but if I highlight them, there's different numbers being spammed each time. Now it's being spammed really quickly because it's in a unstoppable while loop and so it will keep giving me random numbers until I actually stop it. So that's our random number solved. Now this random number will later have to be converted into a choice of rock, paper, or scissor, which is how we're gonna determine what the computer has chosen. Now let's leave that for a bit later. What we're going to do next is we're going to gather the user input. So I'm going to leave a line here because we need to do something else there. So user choice equals input string. And then we need to ask the user what they want to actually select. So select rock um, or paper or scissors. So this needs to be accurate. So the user is going to have to enter either rock, paper or scissor and they need to spell it correctly, which is why we're going to be adding error handling for it as well, just in case they spell it wrong. Cool. So now we've got our user input and we've got our random number. Now this random number right here, we're going to need to change that into the computer's choice. So we're going to do that by actually creating a new function that's going to be converting the number into a choice. First of all, I'm going to go up here and then create a new function, call it def um, converted outcome. And then in this function, we're going to pass in the number that is produced over here. So whatever random number is produced over here will be passed into this converted outcome function into this numbers parameter right here. So what I do next is I'm going to say if number, so whatever number is being passed, which is a random number, equals one, then return rock. So I'm saying that if the number that's randomly produced is one, um, the number one would be assigned to rock. We do an elif number equals two. I'm going to return paper. So if the number that's randomly produced is two, then we're going to return paper. 
and then lastly um, if I do a left number equals three return scissors so now we've got all the three numbers into actual valid rock paper or scissors outcomes now we're gonna have to run this function right here on line 15 so I'm gonna do computer choice so that's my new variable computer choice equals converted outcome and in the brackets I'm gonna pass in the random number because that number is gonna change each time so the computer choice will change two so now down here after the user and computer choice once we're done with that I'm gonna quickly print computer choice and then I'm gonna print um, user choice let me just scroll down a bit here uh, I'm gonna print user choice so user choice and now if I quickly open up my command prompt okay I guess I closed it by accident I have to do that again fortunately CD desktop and hyphen um, rps.py cool so it's asking me to select rock paper or scissors I'm gonna go with rock and now as you see up here the computer's choice is shown first so the computer selected paper in this instance and since we typed in rock we have rock let's do it again computer should either change should pretty much change the um, choice this time sometimes it gets stuck on the same one but hey as you see right here this time the computer chose scissors and we chose paper let's try again let's try rock now it was a tie because the computer selected rock and we selected rock too how about we try scissors computer selected scissors too how about we try that again okay keep selecting okay finally so the random number may sometimes get stuck on the same number in this instance for example we typed in scissor three times or actually four times here and out of four times only one time the computer actually changed to paper so that's completely normal in this scenario where the computer and we choose the same um, avatar let's call it for now it's going to be a draw so now I'm going to quit this loop by pressing Ctrl C or Ctrl Z. Alright, cool. So that's the error that we got, which is fine. Now I'm back on my command prompt again. Minimize that. Now we've got as far as having the two outcomes ready. Now what we're going to do next is do our error handling in here. So before that, we need to actually set the logic for this game. So this is the interesting bit. We're not actually going to be using if statements. So instead of doing the typical tutorials that show you to do if computer choice, I don't know, equals um, rock and, or is it? I'm not sure what and is in Python, but I'm assuming it's and user choice equals paper uh, print computer wins. Actually, I mean user wins. This is jarring because we're going to have to write a load of if and else statements. But instead, we're going to be using the clever way and using a dictionary, which we learned how to use in the last tutorial. So I'm going to have a dictionary up here. I'm going to call it game outcomes. So this dictionary is going to store pretty much all the outcomes that can actually happen in this game and the results to those outcomes. It may sound confusing for now, but as we code, you will understand. So we'll call this outcomes equals and then we're going to open a dictionary now with this is going to be a nested dictionary so inside this nest uh, inside the first outcomes dictionary the first key value is going to be rock now assigned to rock is going to be the different outcomes that could actually occur with rock and um, so what could be played against rock and what the outcome of that would be so the key of the i mean the value of the key rock is going to be the different outcomes so if rock is played against rock the outcome would be draw then we use a comma if rock was played against um, paper then we'd have a loss because we lose and if rock was played against scissors then you'd have a win cool so that's all the um, events that could happen in the place of a rock so that's all the outcomes and an event that can happen when rock has been selected by either computer or the user let's move on to paper same way we have another key value pair where we're going to be assigning the value to another dictionary so paper against rock is obviously a win so paper against rock is going to be a win comma um, paper against paper is going to be a draw comma paper against scissors 
is going to be a loss because obviously scissors would win now last but not the least we are going to do scissors so what are the different events that could occur in the in the case of scissors being um, selected so if scissors are selected and they use against rock we would have loss comma if the scissors are selected against paper we would have win and lastly if the scissors are selected against scissors make sure you're spelling it correctly then we would have a draw cool so that's literally all the possible outcomes that we could have in this game and as you see we we are not using a lot of if if and else statements here which makes it a lot cleaner than if we had done it that approach so now we've got this ready this dictionary is all ready to go so what i'm going to do next is actually show you guys how to implement the logic so we have now the computer's choice and we have the user's choice now we've got to find out who wins so in our loop i'm going to go next and actually type in a try and accept statement because just in case the user enters anything apart from rock paper scissors we need to handle that error so try print i'm going to print you selected um and then the user input so whatever the user has selected user choice then i'm going to print um the computer selected and then whatever the oops i forgot the comma up there comma and then whatever the computer has selected computer choice and then i'm going to do print um asterisk game outcome which is where the actual outcome of the game will be sh shown and then last but not the least this is the main bit where the logic gets in place so we're going to print outcomes which is the name of our dictionary then we're going to print user input which is the user's choice and then we're going to also oops okay come on and then we're also going to use that against the computer choice so this might not make sense right now but let me explain so i'm going to do that and i'm going to print a blank line as well let me just com uh, complete the accept statement so exception statement and then i'll explain what we've just done there print so if anything apart from rock paper scissors entered or any error happens we type in invalid input cool so now what we've done over here is i'm going to quickly zoom out of my screen so i can have the dictionary in the same view as well cool so what we've done over here is we've said actually i'm just going to control c do not do this i'm just doing it for explanation purposes okay there we go we're back to square one so we have print outcomes user choice and then computer choice so when we use square brackets we're pretty much accessing a value of a key so using a key i mean so when we go outcomes we go in this dictionary right here next we are using the user choice now let's say the user has typed in rock if the user types in rock we will be right here so that's going to be the key we're on and the value is going to be this entire dictionary if the user selects paper the key is going to be paper and then this is going to be the value the entire um, dictionary of available events for paper and then if the user selects scissors the key is going to be scissors and then the value is going to be this entire dictionary for the values of scissors cool now let's assume the user has selected rock and then the computer choice somehow comes down to being um, paper so rock is going to be the user's choice so we're right here and then based on that against that we're accessing the, um, the paper paper key inside the rock um, value dictionary so what is the value for the paper key loss so rock against paper comes down to a loss now let's assume the user's choice was paper so if the user's choice has been paper and the computer's choice was i don't know let's say scissors then our value is going to come down to loss so no matter what the user and computer enters this is a foolproof program that will run um, based on any event and give you the right outcome cool so now that we've finished with all of it enough of the blabbering and let's actually run this to see if it works so i'm going to go to my command prompt once again and run this okay user choice is not defined user choice okay i see i forgot to take out this dummy line i had right here sorry cool let's go back 
select rock, paper, or scissors. Let's just give it a fresh one. Uh, I'm gonna full screen. Uh, rock, paper, scissors. Rock. You selected rock. Computer selected rock. Game outcome was a draw. Let's go rock again. I selected rock. Computer selected paper. And I got a loss because paper against rock is obviously a loss for me. Now let's go with rock again. I selected rock. Computer selected rock again. And it was a draw. Let's go with paper. I selected paper. Computer selected paper. It was a draw. Paper again. I selected paper and the computer this time on the contrary selected rock so that was a win on me and lastly we're gonna try scissors and then the computer selected paper Woo. we got a win and now let's try and check our error handling I'm gonna type in some gibberish it says game outcome invalid input so whatever happens it is not going to crash you guys can also implement scores if you like by um, simply replacing these values instead of draw loss or win you can enter something like a number in here and like i don't know like if it's a draw you can enter a score of one and if it's a loss you can enter a score of zero and for a win you can enter a score of two totally up to you and then you can extract that number and then update the user score as you go so if you guys would like a tutorial on how to do that please request that in the comment section if you want to have like a score section in this game as well and then the game ends when a specific user reaches a certain amount of score and then it announces the score uh, that user to be the winner so um hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial it's been uh finally a short tutorial after a while of posting long tutorials so i hope you enjoy this light tutorial hope you like the use of visual studio code now because it's not going to be too intensive on your eyes i just realized how much that helps and it also helps me code a lot more better because of suggestions and all that um, like always guys, if you have any suggestions for other videos, do make sure to drop them in the community tab under my post. If you guys would like to support the channel directly, you can purchase one of the um, emojis, custom emojis in the super chat or you can purchase a highlighted message. I'm not pressuring anyone to do so, but if you'd like to do that out of gratitude, go ahead. Um, what was it? I'm going to also release um, another tutorial based on how to produce a GUI version of this game using Tikinta. So hope you're excited for that. It might not be the next video after this because it may take me a bit of while to try and figure out how I'm going to do that. But as soon as I'm done with that, I'm going to post it. So guys, that's it for today's tutorial. And I will see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace out.